keep coming back to this Imprenor motor to solve application problems. One of the most unique characteristics of this motor, of course, is that slotless design, so there's no torque ripple while we're trying to move. So in a lot of applications, we don't want any disturbance. We want nice, smooth motion. And this motor is designed as a slotless design, so there's no cog torque as we move. Now, the other unique characteristics about this motor, this one here is a 48-volt motor um, that has some pretty high speeds on 48 volts. But with a higher voltage, you can actually obtain 30,000 RPM. The design of this motor is such that the magnets don't fling off the shaft because they're encapsulated in a, in a mechanical, um, the, the way the winding is, is done is like a, a mechanical net that holds the uh, magnets in place. Um, the other unique characteristic is the feedback devices that I find uh, to be used with this. In one application, we used a sine cosine encoder that did 20 million counts per rev. Um, this helped us go really, really slow. So a brief on the standard versus a slotless design. You can see in red the torque ripple as you rotate the motor through 360 degrees based on the windings. And you can see the slotless design is much smoother. Um, this is a shot screen that I got from Infranor. Um, this is an old style cage that the windings go on. Um, so you can see the, the, the design of the stator with the teeth. And this one, of course, has no teeth. So here's the, uh, the stator design without teeth. And the, the magnets on the shaft. And you get the uh, permanent magnets and the stator winding. And uh, here's the comparison of the old versus the new design. And you can tell um, about the torque density is increased because of the way the, uh, the system is built. And you can see the flux in the cross-sectional area. So it's the, you know, the, 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 the flatness or the permeability is uh, pretty consistent through the gap. So an increase in uh, torque and speed, so higher power density for various frame sizes. So looking at the feedback devices available for these motors, of course there's resolvers, so very rugged applications can use this motor. Um, the incremental encoder, they show two options, a Dynapar and a Quantum devices. I kind of like the Quantum devices because they they have many options for feedback. Um, this is this is where you can get a sine cosine encoder. Um, they also have a Heidenheim with sine cosine. That's fine. Heidenheim. Uh, they're actually up to 2.2 now with clock and data. And uh, I don't like to talk about hyperphase because of the Voltage is normally required. See the 12 volt here for the encoder, and everybody else is 5 volt. So um, I'd say stay away from the hyperphase and go with the NDAT 2.2. They also have rugged versions of the, uh, of the 2.2, and it's a good absolute encoder with or without sine cosine. Um, I'm using an Acopoly Excelnet Plus, which has sine cosine or incremental or absolute on it. So any of these options work. So the application that I was working on for very high count um, was an R42 based on the APM Excelnet Plus module. And the feedback was uh, Quantum Devices uh, 1250, which is 5,000 fundamental counts per rev. With 4096 interpolation, you can scale the interpolation. But that's a lot of, uh, a lot of zeros, 20 million. Uh, 20 million 480,000 counts per rev um, that will limit our top speed but you can see for very slow moving applications the slotless design is good the high counts per turn is good and even for uh, the high speed applications we'll take a look at that here so the motor I'm using is the FP0034 
And you can see the maximum speed is 30,000 RPM. Uh, typically, we go several thousand RPM, so the, the speed is unnecessary. This is called a 48 volt winding, so the back EMF is low, volt seconds per radian, which can be converted for volts per radian per second uh, to volts per kRPM. It's about 10 volts per kRPM. We got 1.49 amps, continuous stall. Um, some healthy amount of resistance, so I can I can only get a couple amps with my 20, 26 volt, 24 volt supply, but this is designed for 48 to give you a couple amps. Uh, some normal 4.3 millihenries of inductance, uh, peak and continuous torque, et cetera, et cetera. So I entered all the motor data, hit calculate to calculate the initial tuning values. Um, I've got the uh, 2048 8192 counts per rev incremental encoder with halls. Uh, I did some current loop tuning here. Um, you can see these values CP and CI for a good step response. Um, but we're just going to check out the current loop bandwidth here to see that the current loop was tuned to go really fast if we wanted to, if I had a higher voltage power supply. So I got 1.8 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. And uh, I also did the, uh, the manual phasing with the halls, rotating the current vector. Counts go up when I go forward. Hall indicator decodes properly. I had to adjust the hall offset and invert the feedback to get it to go forward. But that's just based on the logical wiring I did. So once that's all set, I was able to tune. Uh, we'll take a quick peek at the current loop here. So you can see a good step response given the gains of CP and CI. Um, I've also cranked up the velocity loop tuning a bit. Um, I use the, uh, the normal gain shift and tune for good uh, step response here. So the velocity parameters to, to control the X cell and D cell. Um, and we can look at the steady state response there of the velocity loop. But the, uh, the critical factor here for this 8192, critical factor for us is the, the torque ripple. So um, we can see a, a, a 10, 10 rotation move here and look at the following error. Um, so it's pretty incredible uh, smoothness, uh, plus or minus a count while we're rotating. So this is uh, just normal current loop tuning. Move the pole out to 300 hertz and cranked up a little gain here, and uh, default uh, position loop tuning. So this is really easy to tune. I don't have an inertia on here, but you can see um, no torque ripple as we rotate. Uh, just based on the motor's normal shaft inertia, um, this will make for very smooth motion control in a, in a real application. Um, I got a little time, so I'm going to show the tuning of the velocity loop. Uh, current loop is uh, all done. Don't have to worry about it. 1.8 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth, so we can go fast. But I start with the integral to zero and start cranking up the, uh, the VP. The default pole is 200 hertz here, uh, two pole, low pass filter. But at some point, the gain will become too high and we'll start to get a little resonance. Um, I can hear it already, but this is uh, approximately less than 200 hertz due to the phase shift. Um, if we move the pole out, make it a single pole, gives us a little phase margin, uh, we'll see the ringing die down. And uh, I'm going to go for a little excessive VP here. And we may see a little ringing yet still. Yeah, there's a little ring there. Uh, I'm going to push it out a little bit further, trying to maximize the velocity loop bandwidth. And we'll take a quick peek at how this does. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to back down a little bit on the on the VP. 
see if it affects the overshoot there. Um, if the integral is too high, we'll start with uh, sort of a maximum velocity loop integral term and take a look at the overshoot. Yeah, so it had a uh, integral wind up there. We got to back this down a little bit. I'll come back to the integral during the position loop, but uh, we can see uh, pretty stiff uh, velocity control moving the pole out. So now when we do the current loop, I mean the position loop, and this will be a auto setup checkbox, single move. We're going to come back and visit the integral term after we investigate the uh, settling to steady state. So there's a little wind up for steady state. So this integral is a bit high. So let's knock it down. Try 175. So once we land on a value of VP and VI, uh, we can bring them up and down together to uh, increase the stiffness. So you could, you know, you could loosen it up a little bit, make it not so ringy. Just bring the uh, VP and VI down, up and down together. So you get this 400 and about 150. And again, I'm just tweaking the integral at the end of the, the move there to get to the steady state without much integral wind up. Uh, that's pretty good. We'll do a 10 rev again. Yeah, you still see a little bit too much integral here. Back it down a little bit. It'll bring this to steady state better and allow for a closer following while at the constant velocity here. This is uh, the feed forward term corrects the error. But you can see, again, plus or minus account while we're moving. And uh, not too much uh, integral term there, and we won't get any wind up or overcorrection. Okay, thanks for watching.